Hey folks, Yara here and welcome to Emberscape and today I'm gonna cut a piece of fake Baltic Ember, this thing. A 200 grams piece that looks like Baltic Ember from the sides, kinda. So I've got this piece like two or three years ago as a, as a gift. Uh, yeah, when I saw it I was thinking it is Baltic Ember, but it did look suspicious. Look at this uh, front side, it looks literally melted and the rest uh, has some sort of weird crust on it that looks a bit like paper. So what exactly is this thing and why it's fake Baltic Ember? It is a real raisin, that's why you can get fooled quite easily by it when it's cut. It. Right now it looks a little bit weird and suspicious, but it is a real raisin that was kept in the oven uh, to heat it up uh, in high temperature. Uh, it's basically Colombian copal that was heated in the oven. The question is, why would someone uh, do something like that and basically uh, enhance Colombian copal? Well, it's quite uh, simple. Baltic amber is a premium mater material that is quite expensive in jewelry. And this consistency uh, would look like jewelry grade amber. So 200 grams piece like that would be worth like 800 euros or maybe even a thousand, who knows. So what we're gonna do with the piece today? We are gonna cut it and yeah. And let's see how similar is Baltic amber to heated Colombian copal, copal when cut it. I won't be playing around, I did take quite uh, aggressive uh, Dremel bit to remove all the surface uh, swiftly, but it still probably will take a while because there's a lot of surface. <laughs> Let's begin. Uh, basically, uh, Colombian copal is younger and softer than Baltic amber, so when I was cutting Colombian copal with Dremel it was melting a lot. Let's see if we heated Colombian copal will be any different. doesn't look too bad, to be honest, it will be probably a beautiful specimen, even though it's enhanced Colombian copper. To be honest, I don't like what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, and we are only like half done. By, by done, I mean not even close, not even half. Yeah, very much raising. My Dremel keeps overheating and I have to stop and give it time to cool off. Uh, yeah, I guess I will take quite aggressive paper, like, I don't know, 200 grit or something like that. And we'll try to do some manually. Uh, while the Dremel is cooling off because it's taking a really long time to finish this piece. This, this is the wet sandpaper, very aggressive, 100 grit. I, why I will use 100? Because uh, I don't really care uh, how much size we will lose from this piece. I don't really care about that in this moment. And you see there's a lot of bumps and ridges on the surface of the ember. I want a flat surface as an end result everywhere, so that's why. Let's see how it goes with this one. Oof, 40 minutes later with just the sandpaper and yeah, this is what we got. It's a lot flatter now, so the sandpaper does work, but my Dremel is now cooled off, so we will proceed with Dremel. But what can we see? There is a lot of debris in it. Some sort of botanical inclusions, yeah, but not only. Check this one out. This is a fly <laughs> inside, but it, yeah, it, it's very ruined. If it wouldn't be in the oven, then this would be a spectacular piece of Colombian copal. And now we have enhanced piece of Colombian copal 
not jewelry grade because it has a lot of botanical inclusions and all sorts of flies and other stuff it's probably beetle here and this one is an ant yeah an ant now we have just ruined piece with inclusions oh man <laughs> but we will finish uh, finished up i want to remove all of these debris and all the darker spots yeah let's proceed with dremel again all the insect inclusions in this piece are very black they literally got burned during the heating process of this couple I would prefer much more natural piece of couple of this size with insect inclusions. Now all the inclusions are ruined and the piece can't be considered natural anymore. And it got dark, but yeah, we are kind of ready to start pre-polishing. <laughs> it will take probably even longer. Well, maybe not, yeah, but I didn't expect this piece to take so long, yeah, let's stop rambling, let's go and finish up! We will start from 800. Polishing is complete, let's wipe off the polishing paste and see the end result of this fake Baltic Ember. And yeah, we will also compare it to real polished Baltic Ember to see if there's any differences, like obvious ones. Wiping it off is very important after the polishing. And dudes, a fake bolting ember or not, I don't hate it. It looks beautiful. It, it has some gorgeous uh, flown lines. This white color is... Uh, yeah, it's... It doesn't look uh, normal to me. If I wouldn't know it's not Baltic Ember, I would be suspicious, but uh, I wouldn't say, oh, try that it's like it's not Baltic Ember, because it does feel like Baltic Ember, for sure. But in... The, the color wise and uh, transparency wise this one looks like a jewelry grade ember and we can see that this one has a lot of debris inside and uh, insects there are some flies and there is ant and there are some other kind of beetles and stuff and in the jewelry grade ember uh, baltic uh, one it doesn't happen like i have never seen any insects in jewelry grade ember because it doesn't have this debris. This uh, piece of copal is was transparent and it uh, turned opaque after uh, it was uh, laying in high temperature in the oven. Do I think you can make jewelry out of this? Yeah, if you would cut it, like cut out the debris and make smaller pieces, for sure, it would look even more convincing than the one big piece. But the black debris, it wasn't possible to remove because if we look from the bottom we can see that the black debris goes throughout the whole piece so yeah it is what it is so now let's compare it to real baltic amber and let me know what do you think now check it out all of these pieces are uh, real baltic amber except for this one this one is integrate so it's fully transparent with inclusions and beetles and stuff does it look similar not really, right? This one is the this one is real Baltic Ember. It's the most similar to this one. It also has some white parts in here. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Would you tell this one apart from the rest of this? Which one is Baltic Ember and which one is not? Quite hard, yeah. It does look a little bit different, but outright a lot of people can be fooled by this <laughs> heated. Colombian couple and for a good reason because it's a real raisin that was heated to resemble a Baltic Amber. 
And there we go, the little experiment is over. <laughs> it does look a lot like welding amber. I don't have any problems with Columbian Coppel. I own Columbian Coppel. I love it. The insects are gorgeous. The material itself is very beautiful and nice. I have issue when something is advertised uh, as one thing and it's not for a scam purposes. So that's a problem. And yeah, let me know what do you think about this fake Baltic Ember. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.